really speaks to me internally. It really feels like I'm saying something for people to, to recognize graffiti art as something that's a positive thing, something that moves people, something that changes people's lives. You may think that it's, you know, we're just a bunch of thugs painting on the street and tagging up stuff. If I could get over that hurdle and for people to see the artistic value to it, that's like everything. You can't change the fact that change is a coming. What you running from, sun, sun still comes up. You can't take your back, can't walk off the tracks. I can see it coming. I can see it coming. I moved here in North Minneapolis in 10th grade. I was kind of a loner to begin with. Uh, I'm a child of divorce. I've moved from parent to parent, city to city. So I didn't have a peer group that I could follow along with. And graffiti was the one thing that kind of gave me acceptance because of the jean jackets. I would wear a jacket and then I would, I got recognized. Oh, look at this guy. And immediately I had status. Yo, what's up, Peyton? Yo, stun one. How you doing, man? Pretty good. I haven't seen you since Pete Lewis. You ready to paint today? You got a plan? I got a sketch in my book. All right, so we got a green wall. One to One is a personal jam session that takes place at my studio, where I invite other artists from the graffiti culture to come in and share in food and drink and styles and techniques and methods. It started off really low key, just, you know, one or two people were gonna come to my studio and I was, we were just gonna paint. And the more people that came through, the more that wanted to come through. We needed a color scheme. I'm kind of thinking purples, man, what do you, what do you think? Yeah, purple, orange. Let's see what we got. It's, uh, you know, we got the whole shelf back here. We got all the scraps over here. That's like completely 100% free game. I provide most everything through me teaching all these classes and writing these grants. I've been able to accumulate a lot of paint. You remember these, how these used to work on, on old school Krylon? Oh yeah. Bro. That's why I like them so much. I know, man. I totally miss that. Yeah. Like when these came out, that was such a game changer. The apex of our culture is the aerosol can, the spray can. It's a medium that was never intended to be used as an artistic tool matching up different colors and articulating into, uh, you know, an artistic object. It takes years to study and master. I don't even have a complete outline, man. I'm gonna have to freestyle some parts of this. The mid-1980s, when I discovered Graffiti art, there's virtually nothing here. There was there was a few tags around town. So graffiti writing had existed here on a very small scale, but nobody had really been doing murals. No one was doing pieces, like full out aerosol, colors, background characters. So a lot of us in the graffiti culture, we do have morals and etiquette and there are certain places that we deem acceptable to paint. And then you have sort of like your, your new jacks coming up. You find them painting in areas that even when I see that, I go, ooh, maybe not there. I'm really grateful to be a part of this culture and I have been a part of it for 30 years. Because the popular culture has adopted it so much, I'm able to make a career based on it because now I'm teaching in schools. Okay, good morning, guys. We are going to recap what we've been doing for the last three days, and we're going to end off with drawing what we're going to paint for tomorrow. I've been teaching graffiti for 15, 20 years, and one thing that's been consistent through the years is a graffiti camp that we teach at Intermedia Arts. So in the beginning, <clears throat> we started off with my quadrilateral grid system, drawing the rectangle and then breaking the rectangle down into three shapes vertically. You want to try to equally space those out. If you're going to be a graffiti writer, you got to know how to write and draw letters. In order to do that, you have to learn 
balance. You know, you learn that that structure, the kerning of letters and the negative space. I and mean, that's what you articulate artistically. You know, being a graduate from the Chicago Art Institute, I've done traditional drawing, painting, sculpture, ceramics, and working with the aerosol can is by far a lot more difficult than all of those mediums put together. I majored in screen printing, uh, printmaking. And during my time in school, I took a lot of business courses and, you know, just kind of the whole economics about uh, being a professional artist. Star Wars is sort of a cult classic now. You know, anyone who's interested in street art or graffiti art, graffiti writing, should understand and know that video. The documentary Star Wars was the one thing that really changed my life. It helped me bridge a gap from being this artist where I had lost my inspiration, I had lost my motivation for making art to readdressing my artistic endeavors through lettering and graffiti and spray paint. We've been doing this camp now for about six years. Uh, JoJo actually runs the, the graffiti portion called The Game, Graffiti Art Mentoring and Education. And we're on the final day of this camp. So you're, you're actually at the point now where you can s start focusing more on like trying to sharpen these edges. So you want to turn the can to the edge so you get a sharp edge and the overspray comes back into your letter. I bring my students through a process of can control exercises. Let your arm just kind of go with it, okay? Start it in the black and let it rip on the outside here. Everybody has a line that they create that's a little different than the next artist. And it's those minute changes, again, in your fine motor skills and your speed and your distance, the brand of paint that you use and the cap that you're using. You know, it all, it all that you know goes into an effect of how you're creating your lines. Look how the lines are thicker. The letters look a lot healthier and they're stronger. It stands up nice. We're in North Minneapolis, Glenwood and Morgan. If you're going east on Glenwood, this wall just eventually hits you right in the face because there's an open lot right in front of it. And I just love painting here because of that reason. Graffiti is more of an, an enhancement to communities instead of a detriment, even though it has all of the, the negative connotations about it with vandalism. It just really articulates certain neighborhoods and environments. The inspiration for this piece is my daughter. So I'm using some of the, the colors and the likenesses of her, of her favorite book, and I'm kind of recreating those images into this mural. The combination of all the things that I've been doing, teaching my one-to-one, -one, painting out in the environment, being the elder in the culture, it's almost like I'm becoming an ambassador for the Twin Cities you know, graffiti culture. I know originally, in high school how I felt about this art form. I know how that made me feel, and I want other people to experience that.